I want to kick off this video with a quote that I heard recently that you miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. And I wrote something on my Strava the other day showing up to hill climbs that are on the short side for my liking. It's part of developing the right mindset to win in the long run. Because even though I don't win, I show up and my name is on the start sheet. And that could be enough because you never know what can happen. Not showing up though is handing the win right on the opposition's plate. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another analysis video of yet another hill climb race. I hope you're enjoying these. So far, we've done one every single time we've done a hill climb. So I'm either giving away all of my secrets, although I'm not winning, so I suppose I'm not giving away my secrets. <laughs> anyway, this hill climb is from the past weekend. It was a Saturday, it was in Cheltenham, and it was called Bushcombe Lane, uh, organized by Cheltenham Cycling Club. Uh, the climb was super steep. I'm just trying to set the stage for it. If you've seen the video already, you'll have known from the footage, the footage in that video, there was like a short clip um, from the steepest part where I've got to be honest, when I was in the race itself, it felt like I was going quite quick. Uh, and then when I saw the footage, it looked like I was like doing walking speed. Um, so it was very steep. It was a lot shorter time-wise than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to take me around the five minute mark and ended up taking me four minutes and 14 seconds it will take a couple of seconds. As always, we use Strava with the source for Strava add-on, which is for Google Chrome. And um, it allows me to see a bit more data, but also um, I think just gives us a good overview as well as like the basic stuff you get with Strava. So um, let's jump in to the ride itself. And I'm gonna try and keep this to like 10 to 15 minutes long this video because I know that you know, we do, we've already seen the video, we know the result, and this is just diving into the data a bit more. So, um, okay, uh, let's start. Uh, the climb itself, because Strava does this thing with my privacy that I can't actually pick up any segments over the whole climb, apart from the hidden ones, um, it shows here, let's just jump right in. Uh, my time was a four minute 11, it's not the official time, obviously, um, for this segment. 1.1k at 13%. Yeah, but that's just the average. That's not like the steepest part. Um, and here, although I don't appear on the leaderboard because obviously it appears in my privacy section, uh, 411 would have put me in third place, which is obviously where I came. So only a couple of seconds away from second place and then Andy Feather again, like another 10 seconds away from that. So the climb, as you can see from this very brief overview, is pretty steep for the first six, 700 meters and then flattens off for a fast finish. Um, so what I said in the video was I would potentially pace it with a hard start, not like hard off the line, but like hard in terms of that first half is going to be harder than the second half, power production-wise. And then I would just kind of grovel to the line and see what I could produce. Um, and uh, and obviously, given that the whole climb was 4 minutes and 14 seconds, the actual crunch point of the climb would be even less than that. So it would only be 3 minutes or so for, for us on that steep section, and then a minute, give or take, for that flatter section over the top. So that's something to bear in mind. Like, this climb... Generally, when you think about it, you know, you think about it as a whole climb, but actually the climb itself is only three minutes long. And then the rest of it is like, you know, a bit of, uh, still a bit of gradient, but it's undulating. We'll get into that now in a second. So here we go. We've got this first section, which I'll highlight, uh, and 600 meters at 18%. That is like the top of the bulk of gross for those of you uh, who live in Mid Wales or have ridden that famous climb in Mid Wales. Uh, obviously that climbs a lot longer and steeper in general, but that is the finishing section of the bulk of gross. Um, and then the last part is uh, a very smidge small 6% for 400 meters. So traveling at a fairly different speed over that section as you can imagine. Um, and as you can see, so, was I pleased with my result? Yes, another podium. Uh, could I have done better? Of course. Um, 
what about the power of production and what about the pacing? Well, as you can see at first glance, you would think that I've paced it bang on, which to a certain extent I have, but there is room for improvement. So my power drops near the end. And as I was talking to a couple of people before the start, they were thinking like, oh, I don't want to go too deep on the steeper section because then I'll die at the end on that 6% gradient. And I said, well, to be honest with you, I said, like if you save something for that flat, flatter section at the end, you're only going to save yourself, you're only going to give yourself an extra one or two seconds. Like, Or, or if you save something for there, you're only going to go one or two seconds faster over that distance because you're spending less time on that section you know for me i spent one minute and 13 seconds so when you look at the steeper section although in the back of your mind you're thinking you know it's so steep and there's a possibility where i could blow up spectacularly it is still the place to invest because that is where you're spending the majority of your time on the climb you know generally rule of thumb if you're moving slower invest more if you're moving faster generally invest less uh, it's a very simple rule of thumb when trying to improve your climbing times um, so all the gcm videos you've ever seen about how to climb faster a lot of rubbish because you just literally just need that one tip <laughs> i'm joking but like yeah so i i definitely set off hard because if we look over here peak power production on the left hand side let's look for the first minute or my best minute rather and that did actually come in the first minute uh now the problem was i thought that first minute was steeper than it was i'd only seen the climb once before uh, and i knew the end was steep like the last 200 meters of the steep bit was steep but if you if you compare the first 100 meters and you can all do this you just simply drag back and forth across that top section the first minute i did 500 watts and that last minute and a half on the steepest section just before you crest over the top i did 465 so it's not a huge difference it well it is a fairly big difference it's 35 watts but i i would have rather looking back on it i would have rather have done that and just absolutely turn myself inside out which i did um on that steep section i was out the saddle the whole way for like a good two minutes i was fully invested out the saddle and I knew that if I at least invested early, I just, my only goal was to suffer on that part and get out the saddle and just try and push as much power as possible. Because at the end of the day, you know, racing is also testing. You know, you're also testing yourself. You're also learning from the race. So it's not, it's not just, you know, um, sometimes you have to turn up at a race and you have to fail in order to know if, training is working because you're progressing or if you're capable of more because most of the time you can turn up to a race and you can be like right this is my plan and i'm going to stick to it i'm not going to like deviate but the problem with that is if you do that then you don't push yourself and you don't see if there's a chance to go any faster so that's what i did with this and i was perfectly happy with producing 480 watts for the three minutes before the gradient then gave away and i was sort of only just producing like 400 watts to the finish line which is a fair bit less um but i've sort of turned myself into someone now who's only good when it's steep and when it starts getting variable i like struggle a little bit so anyway as far as i'm aware or as far as i'm concerned that i had a good ride i had a good ride but then when you compare so if you look at certain segments and we'll just look at these quickly to finish off the Bushcombe Wall, which is the steepest section of the climb, which is where my power was obviously less than what it was at the start. If I produced my 500 watts here rather than in the first minute, things might have been different. But if you look at this, this is quite intriguing. Um, you have uh, my time, which was obviously good enough for second when I uploaded, but then I dropped down the rankings. Now, I finished third, remember, behind Feather and Biddle only by a couple of seconds. So I finished three seconds, I think, behind Biddle and about 10 behind Andy. But I think David Fellows came fourth, which was a great ride. But look at the difference in time on this middle section where it's really, really steep. So I go 149. Uh, Dave Scott goes 146. Um, 
Cam goes nine seconds quicker over that section. Uh, and then a little bit more there, 12 seconds. And then David Fellows is like flipping a fair bit quicker than me um, over that section. But I'm not going to delve too much into it, but like obviously I pulled back somewhere else. Um, I definitely didn't pull back on Andy in the, in the last section, on the flat of it. I definitely didn't pull back on Cam on that flat a bit at the end. So things stayed fairly equal over that section. So where I lost where I lost the racing effect is on that steep section. Um, and where I gained slightly was in that first minute over Cam. Um, not by much, a couple of seconds. But then he pulled it back and then put time into me on the steep section. But further, obviously went faster than me across the board apart from then the last couple hundred meters where it was flat and everyone was fairly equal at that point. So um, it's interesting uh, when you look at it and when you delve into it because you can pull it apart and you can see different things. You know, obviously what I see might be different to what you see um, and it's kind of why I put this out there because it gives us all a chance to see, um, you know, the ins and outs of it and if you pick up on anything or if you find something interesting or you know if you have knowledge of this climb and you know as a local that there's a better way to ride in it or you know there's a better line to take because of course you know it was also really difficult with the gradient knowing exactly where to ride with gravel and things like that then that's what the comment section is for to get involved uh in the conversation so that's going to wrap up this video um Obviously, uh, we've got a hill climb this weekend, and then I am off away somewhere. So, hopefully I can get the video edited and out to you from this weekend's race. Obviously, I will see you in a vlog before the weekend as well, so you haven't got long to wait for that one. So, until then, I'll see you in the next one.